This video is going to cover a number of different topics with the focus on learning how to validate data entry in Swift UI. Throughout the process, we'll learn about the MVVM design pattern and use regular expressions to validate the data. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. I'm going to refactor a fairly straightforward Swift UI view that displays a sign up screen that looks like this. The starter project has the current view already completed. As you can see, there is no validation on the fields at all. I can enter anything at any time. I also utilize a Z-Strack that displays a scrolling selection list of years from which to pick from to populate this year field. This is a technique I use a lot when I want to present from a selection of options rather than using the standard Swift UI picker views. I'll leave it up to you to explore how I've done this, but that's not the point of this tutorial. I can also tap the sign up button at any time as well, even when there are no values in the fields and when the passwords don't match. So here's the finished project. When the app launches, notice that there are now some additional prompts prompting the user what to enter in the fields. Also, the sign up button is disabled and the opacity is less than one. As soon as I enter the valid data in the fields, the prompts disappear. When all of the criteria is met, the sign up button is active and at full opacity, and I can complete the sign up process, whatever that may be. And by the way, it supports both light and dark mode. So that's what we're going to do in this project. We want to take this starter project and refactor it to this current one using NVVM, which is the perfect design pattern, in my opinion, for Swift UI. You can find a link to the starter project in the notes below. MVVM stands for Model View View Model. What we have in Content View is the view, and we want to create a view model that will be responsible for passing the correct information to the view for display. Our view shouldn't really be responsible for generating what prompts go where or how to display different pieces of information. It's really just there to lay out the objects. If we look at our Content View, we see we have four different state variables that, when changed, update our view. We could get ourselves into a massive view situation if we start to add that display logic here. As it is, the view is quite readable. The body is a Z stack and it contains two other stacks. The visible one right now is the sign up stack. And this contains three text fields. And I've extracted a view here that accepts the SF symbol name and a placeholder string, as well as a binding for the text field and a Boolean value that will indicate whether or not the field is secure. We need the secure option if it's a password field to hide the text as typed. We'll come back to that momentarily. The year of birth is actually a button that when tapped toggles the show year selected variable, which disables the entire sign up view and sets the opacity of my picker view to one. The view is always there, but it originally has an opacity of zero. So when show selector is false, it's hidden from view. The picker is just a scrolling list of buttons starting at the current year and going back 100 years. Note the reversed designation. When you tap on one, the opacity is set back to zero and birth year is updated with the selected item and the button label is, as a result, updated with that value. Now let's go back to the entry field. Here's that entry field, and you see I simply display a secure field or a text field depending on whether or not is secure has been set to true. It is set to false by default. The view properties just make it look pretty. The view itself is embedded in a V stack, so wouldn't it be nice if we could add a prompt field below each field so we can then display our prompt? So let's just add text. This is a prompt for my view to be displayed here. Notice that the prompt doesn't always wrap to two lines. We can fix that with a fixed size with horizontal being false and vertical being true. And let's set the font to dot caption to reduce the size somewhat. Now, of course, we want to have that prompt text change depending on whether or not the field is valid. So we need to pass text that will be different for each field. So let's create a string variable called prompt and replace our string with that variable. 
Of course, this now breaks our view because our entry field is missing the prompt. I have three errors. Now I could click on each and let Xcode fix each one, one at a time, or I can use Control Option Command F to fix all errors at once. And let me just pass in an empty string for the time being. So now it's time to create a view model. I want to take all of these content variables out of our view and perform any validation elsewhere. So let me cut these out here now, and I'm going to create a new file called signup view model. Inside that file, I'll create a new class called signup view model. And I'm going to paste those four variables in, but I'll remove the at state private designations. We can now return to content view and create a new variable that will initialize an instance of this class as a state variable. So at state private var signup vm is just equal to signup view model. Now, since we removed our original state variables, we'll need to fix our code by adding in the signup vm in front of those former state variables. Now, this one doesn't give an error, so make sure you catch it. I have to add signup vm in front of birth year as well, and I don't need that self here either. So far, so good. The app is still running nicely, but not doing any validation. So let's return to our view model and work on that. The first thing I'm going to do is start dividing my code into sections. View model files can tend to get quite large, so using a pragma mark to separate the code can be very useful over time. I use Xcode snippets a lot, and you'll see shortly as I often don't remember code syntax. I created a video on this a while back, so you may wish to check it out. For example, I use my shortcut sw underscore mark to insert a mark pragma with a placeholder that allows me to define my section. In this one, I'm just going to call it validation functions. Now I'm going to have to write four functions and each one will return true if the data entered matches my criteria, and each one is for each of the four inputs. Let me start with the easiest one first. I'll check to see if my password and confirm passwords fields match. So function passwords match, and I'll return a bool, and what I'll return is just the truthfulness of password equals equals confirm password. Notice I don't need the return keyword anymore as it's a single statement. Now how about checking whether or not my password meets my criteria? I don't want to allow simple passwords, and this is the perfect solution for regular expressions. If you're not familiar with regular expressions, don't worry. There are a lot of resources out there. Just search for regex or regex depending on how you pronounce it. I'm not going to go over the specifics, I'm just going to point you to a resource to find regular expressions for validation. So let me start with the snippet again that I created that I use all the time. It's for validation. Now for every placeholder named field, I'm going to replace that with the field that I want to validate. So I'll start with password. And for the moment, we'll leave the regex placeholder alone. Now regular expressions are patterns used to match character combinations and strings. And this NS predicate that we'll be defining with a regular expression will be used to evaluate our password field and return true if it matches the criteria, otherwise it's going to return false. In my snippet, I have a link to a site that I find extremely useful for validation. It's a regular expression library that contains useful regular expressions. For example, let me search for password. I get 803 different results. And as we read through the descriptions, it tells us what our string must be. And you can pick whatever criteria that you want. But let me choose this one. It says that passwords must be between 8 and 15 characters and include an uppercase, a lowercase, and a numeric digit. I'm just going to copy this and replace my regex placeholder back in my Xcode with that.
Now I get an error about an invalid escape sequence. And that's because there's a backslash in our regex, which is the escape character in Swift. So all I need to do is insert an additional backslash in front of it to escape it. It's kind of like a double negative. Now what this function does is return true only if our password field evaluates by our regular expression to be true. Otherwise, it'll return false. So let's do one now for email. I will use our validation code snippet again and replace our field placeholder with email. Switching back to our library site, I'll search for email. And this time I get 920 results. And I'm going to choose the third one as it looks like it's a good one for me. I'll copy this regular expression and paste it back into my placeholder in Xcode. And I have to make sure that I escape nine backslashes this time. Our final check now is to see if our age field is valid. In our case, we only want to allow people if they are turning 21 this year. So we can do a check on the current year and subtract the birth year to see if it's greater than or equal to 21. Well, the current year can be found by date components. And I already have this in our default birth year when the instance of our view model is initiated. So let me copy that to designate this year and subtract birth year and check if it's greater than or equal to 21. Now that I've got my functions created, I can create a single computed variable that I'll call is sign up complete that will return false if any one of our tests fail. So I can use not on our tests and or on each test. Now if they all pass, it'll be true. So var is sign up complete, a boolean if not password match or not is password valid or not is email valid or not is valid age, return false, otherwise it'll return true. Now we're almost ready to put this to work. However, we need some way for our application to know when changes are made to any of these fields. We do this by making our signup view model conform to observable object. And then we can publish any field we want to watch. So in our case, Email, password, and confirm password are fields that change as the user enters text, so we'll decorate them with at published. Now we don't need to do that for birth year as we're changing that one right on the content view as we pick our year. Returning now to content view, I'll need to change sign up VM from an at state variable to an observed object and remove the private designation. Let's test this so far. If our isSignUpComplete variable in SignUpView is false, we want to reduce the opacity of our signup button, so we can use the tertiary operator here. For opacity, if signupVM is signupComplete, the opacity is 1, else 0 0.6. Similarly, if we want to disable the button, we can just say that it is disabled if isSignUpComplete is not true. So let's resume our canvas, and indeed it's disabled with a 0.6 opacity. We can test it out by entering email addresses and passwords. And I'll pick a year that makes me at least 21 years old. And as soon as I do, our button is enabled. Notice that if I entered an invalid email, the button gets disabled. So far, so good, but wouldn't it be nice to be able to provide feedback as to which fields aren't valid? Well, we already have our prompts field in place, but they're currently just empty strings. So all we need to do is create four computed string variables that will return a string with descriptive content if the corresponding validation check fails. So back in our view model file, let's create a pragma section for validation prompt strings. Our first will be our confirm password check. So var confirm password prompt be a string. And if passwords match, 
return the empty string, else, return, password fields do not match. Next, the email prompt. If, is email valid, return an empty string, else, return, enter a valid email address. Similarly, var password prompt, string, if is password valid, will return an empty string, else, will return, must be between 8 and 15 characters, containing at least one number and one capital letter. And finally, var age prompt, if is valid age, this time we'll just return the caption we already have, year of birth, else we'll return year of birth, and then in brackets must be 21 years old. So now we can return back to our content view to implement this. The prompt for email is signupvm.email prompt. For password, it's signupvm.password prompt. And for confirm password, you guessed it, signupvm.confirm password prompt. And in the caption below our button for selecting the age, the text is just going to be signupvm.age prompt. Now let's resume and test our canvas. We see our prompts. And as the criteria is met, the prompts disappear since they'll be set to an empty string. When all are met, the sign up button is at full opacity and active. Now this has been a long video, but let me just add one more thing. Once the button is tapped, you will have a function for registering your users or whatever your form submission will do. And what you want to do at this point is probably clear the fields afterwards so that you could start all over again for another entry. So back in our view model, I'm going to create a function called signup, where we would call our storage functions and perhaps receive a callback. It would be prudent to note here that in this tutorial we have covered view and view model, but we've not talked at all about the model layer. And this is the one of the nice things about MVVM. Our model can be any type of model required. For example, we could be working with core data, realm, or storing data as JSON in the file structure. You could use anything. But it's at this point that you'd be interacting with your model by passing the validated data from our view model to the model to create a new instance and then perhaps use storage functions to store the result, keeping your code completely separate where it belongs. Once complete, however, you can set all of the values back to their defaults, which are these ones. So I'll just copy the assignments from our declaration and paste them here. Now back in our content view, we can call that function when the button is tapped. Testing one last time. After getting an active sign up button, we can tap it and then the fields are cleared. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.